Welcome back guys, it's John here. You're watching Outside Media. Hey guys, welcome back. It's John from Outside Media. Behind me, we got the Polaris Sportsman 500, the long-term project that started this channel. All right, so to catch you guys up, we're gonna have to go in the Wayback Machine and see where this video started several months ago. So come along. Are you guys coming or what? All right, so first things first, I gotta get the wheel off this thing um, because the brake line broke. I was out riding around off camera, learned a lesson always have the camera rolling um, I want to get this brake line replaced I got a Amazon Jeff jungle replacement piece to put on there um, get that on get this thing so I can tool it around the yard I kind of wanted to carve out a little trail maybe we'll use it to move some logs who knows but see some action with this one let's get to it I see this but I already took some stuff off because uh, I thought I was gonna have to pull the whole front plastic off I don't think I'm going to I think it's just gonna be a huge pain to get with this line off where it's connected so here we go only one way to do it that's to do it you guys in here a little bit closer see what's going on <laughs> there's the end of my broken brake hose broke off flush with the caliber right there the little fitting uh, and also I just noticed this wire broken which seems to be a speed sensor wire so I'm gonna try and splice that back together while I'm in here but this line goes up and it gets into this little splitter block up there underneath the gas tank. And if I have to, might be just pulling the front plastic off again and getting that tank out of the way just to make it easier. Here we go. Right here I have my little brake line. Well, ran into a minor issue, minor meaning major. The two fittings that I have here do not match. The new one's much smaller. So I might have to figure out how to repair this or get the right part. decided since I'm out here and I can still feel my hands a little bit uh, it makes sense I just tested I got power and ground for the light wires that were just sitting here cut I'm gonna put on the LED pods that I talked about since day one uh, here we go to get the lights on got them all wired up use a little cheap weather pack connector kit I had laying around uh, they work let's check it out well I went ahead and got some lights put on this thing hands are still I can still feel them a little bit, so I don't know if I'm gonna keep sticking out here or not. But at least I have lights on the front before I had none. I got an old school up top H4 yellow bulb, you know, like old halogen bulb. 
down low for the low beams. I got those LED pods. Should be good to do anything anytime this year. I mean, it's dark when I leave for work, dark when I come home. So if I want to go around and I don't know, get some wood from the back. Now I can do that. So, or whoever, next guy, you know, you know how it is. There's the next guy, there's the last guy. Well, I guess I'm soon to be the last guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing back together. I don't need the front apart. I figured that out when I got the brake line out. So I'm gonna put the plastics and the racks and stuff all back on now that I got the headlights wired up and should look like a quad again, minus a wheel. Okay, well that's gonna be it for me today. Uh, can't feel these anymore. I'm gonna get back to you guys as soon as I figure out what I'm doing with that brake line. So I'll catch you in a few. Okay, we're back in present day, outside media. It's the beginning of March, 2024. This thing's been sitting in the same spot for months and I'm sick of it. Uh, To-do list on the quad is Replace brake pads, I got brand new pads, front and rear, cheapo Amazon specials, but they're better than what was there, you guys will see that. Um, I got new ball joints, because when I was doing brake stuff, I found that the ball joints were very loose, way looser than I was comfortable with, so I didn't want something falling apart on the next guy or whatever, or me for that matter, in a test ride or whatever. I've got new tie rod ends that was part of the whole deal way back, I knew those things were loose. I'll show you guys that in a minute and uh, I guess first things first, let's do some brake pad stuff. Let's hit it. We'll start by taking off these calipers. You guys see how loose that tie rod end is? Pretty bad. Doesn't feel that bad when you're riding it, but it's pretty bad. Not the first guy up in this thing. There's some weird washers and everything like that going on with this. I guess that's it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of that stuff apart and I'll catch you guys back in a few minutes. All right, let's have a look right there. We got a brake caliper that uh, sits on a little disc that runs off the gearbox. So let's get that guy off of there. That was barely tight at all. That one too. I hope it's not stripped out. This is a weird little caliper where it's got um, two pistons in it. One operated from the front brake lever, the other one operated by the foot pedal. That's why there's two lines going to it. So it should be interesting. Try to spread that apart a little bit.
Hmm. Maybe this clip comes out of here. I think I just gotta work it out. Spread those apart. There we go. These pads are halfway decent yet. Figure out how I'm gonna compress those pistons. It's probably a frowned upon method, but I'm gonna do it. Stick it back on here right where we took it off from. Spread the pistons with the pads, kind of like we just did. Oh. Not ideal, but I think it worked. Slide the pads in. This is where that block and clip come in handy. All right. That wasn't horrible. These bolts have me a little concerned, but they were working before, so I'm just gonna send it. They should, in theory, tighten all the way down. Looked like they were halfway out when I started. Someone probably forgot to put their bolts in. I guess we can be a little better than they were. Okay. See if this thing pumps up with the pedal at all. Nope. The uh, rear master cylinder is also highly suspect. And I'm gonna see if it'll pump up with the brakes. You guys watch it. Not much of anything going on there. Yeah, those pistons aren't moving at all. Yeah, hey guys, we got the brake pads replaced. Front pads are in. Check out how bad these old pads were. They were terrible. Uh, yeah, we kind of knew that already. Anyway, the rears were okay. Somebody had been there already. Uh, they left the bolts loose. We got those tightened up. Um, everything's back together. The pistons in the rear are not pumping up kind of expected that the rear master cylinder is kind of suspect and the front I know it has air in the front brake system so we got some bleeding to do let's get to it Okay guys, I think I got something here that resembles a serviceable brake. Good enough to continue, at least to move this thing out of the way. Uh, let's get down to some ball joint business. See how loose that thing is? Should be able to fix that. I think I'm gonna pull the shield off just to make it a little bit easier to see what's up. Guess when you're missing a screw, it takes two thirds of the time. Put some pressure down on this thing and hit it at the same time. Here we go. Now, let's figure out how to take this part apart. 
That thing is trash. All right, I got two Allen bolts in the bottom of there. Here we go. Need a little more leverage. Just using a ratchet and a bit with a quarter inch socket. Oh, shit. That one is tight. Well, my bit gave up. <laughs> Two piece bit. Maybe it needs some heat. See if I can start a fire in here. Oh, there it goes. Now it looks like this uh, gold little tool is meant to pull the ball joints out and push them in. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out how that thing works. in the bottom of that bolt. Alright. Got my 11 sixteenths right here. Here we go. Oh, my upside down screwing was the wrong way. Come on. Slot was quite off center, but trying to see if I can. What the heck? What in the world? Something happened. The nut stripped. I think. Or it's actually moving. The only one way to find out. Nope, the nuts stripping. <laughs> Great. Take these knuckles off when I might have to. Well, guys, I far exceeded the effort to worth it ratio threshold here. Things got a little bit carried away. Let me show you. Well, looking at a grade A mess right here. I uh, I pulled the knuckle off because I didn't see another way. Uh, I got it in the vise right here. I'm gonna see if I can hammer on it or something. And if uh, if I get sick of it today, I'm gonna to take this into work and see if I can mess around with it after work or something and get that joint out. I started messing around with the other side over here and I put that thing right back together because those little Allen screws that hold the shield over the ball joint, they were fighting me and I didn't wanna go there. This joint is tight, so I'm gonna leave it alone. I just want to fix the loose one, and I think I'm ready to move on with my life.
There it is. Huh. Yikes. Okay guys, here it is. Rate my setup. It's a nail instead of the cotter pin. Threads were totally gone on this thing. Um, yeah, it got interesting. I used the air hammer as you guys saw. Just had to get it just right and it came right out. So let's see if we can get the new one driven in. All that work for that little ball joint. Man. Might have to use a floor jack to try to compress that spring, but I can see a line where it was, where this knuckle was, so I think we can handle that. Get my hammer out. Oh yeah. Might not need the old spring compressor. Don't try this at home, do it at your friend's house. Boom! It worked. Alright, I got everything but the tie rod end back on, and that will be our next project. I'm up here at the vise. Uh, I have the left side tie rod here. Got my new ends right here. It comes with bolts, I guess. I'm gonna take everything out of the bag so I can see what I got. And I'm gonna compare these to make sure the centering is the same. And then I'm just gonna take these off Loosen these jam nuts, put the new ones on right where the old ones were, and put it together and see how it is. These threads look decent, so should be able to clean some of this dirt out of here and be able to align it 
easily if we need to, so I'm gonna get to that. Considering how much work that was, I feel okay with what we got going on. I got the ball joint done, got the tie rods installed. Uh, the only thing I gotta do yet is wrap up that little electrical fix you guys saw and uh, secure it safely out of the way, throw the wheels back on, throw the seat back on, see what this thing does. And I wanna make sure that left front wheel locks up in four wheel drive because those two little wires were the magnetic clutch that engages each side of the hub that locks the hub in. So I wanna make sure that works still. Um, but I'm done for my day. You guys will see me in a few minutes or in a second with the final reveal of this thing.
Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap this thing up right here. Polaris is behind me. Got me around the yard pretty good. The brakes definitely need work. They're not bled enough yet. I don't think the 4x4 was working, so there's a little bit more to do. If you guys wanna see that, let me know. I'll make it happen. Otherwise, I'll just fix it on my own time and go on to something cooler. So, show this video some love if you wanna see more. Stick around. Uh, I got something coming down the pipeline regarding some merchandise with some outside branding, not this. Um, so keep your eyes peeled and thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, all the YouTube stuff. Till next time.